So the first thing I'm going to show you is in office hours. If you are doing using office hours for your appointment, um, you can do eligibility verification right from within your office hours. So I'm going to go ahead and add an appointment. So the typical workflow is a patient calls in, schedules an appointment. So you can go ahead and add new appointment to your office hours scheduler. Um, typically, if it's a new patient, of course, if you're doing eligibility for a brand new patient, you would right click and hit new patient. And right from this office hour scheduler, you can create a chart for that patient. The only thing you need to create a chart is the patient's name. Of course, for eligibility verification, you do have to collect the birth date and the sex. So once you've keyed those in to create your chart here, um, you'll just hit save in the top right hand corner. I've already created my chart for my, Don, my John Doe patient. So you can see here, all I've collected is the patient's first and last name, the birth date, and the sex of the patient. And that's all I needed to create the chart. Um, the next thing you'll need to do is create a case for this patient. Now, I've already created a case for him, so I had information set up for this training purposes. But if you need to create a new case, you're just going to right-click and hit New Case. And that will bring you to the screen so you can create a case for the patient. In the case, the only thing that you have to um, do to create a case is you have to have a description of the case. You can do anything you want for the description of the case, but if the person has Blue Cross Blue Shield, I would say Blue Cross Blue Shield and maybe the start of the policy so I know when I started adding charge to this case. So I can say May 2018. And then you'll need to go over to the uh, policy number. Actually, I'm sorry, I skipped a step here. You want to go to the account tab and make sure you select the provider. You have to have a provider here selected because that's how eligibility verification is ran. And then policy num policy tab. This is where you're going to set up the insurance policy. So, for example, um, I'm going to pull up the case that I already have created so I can show you. One second here. I'm just going to, all I did was right click and edit the case that I already have there. So, I have my description my provider code, and then my policy tab. So in my policy, I selected what insurance company the patient had told me over the phone that they have. Um, I've selected who the policy holder is, um, relationship to insured, and John Doe told me he's the policy holder, so it would be self, and then my policy number. So I keep in the policy number here, um, and that's what you need for eligibility verification. So once you have that information completed, and I have my appointment established here, and I'm going to select a reason for appointment. I'm just going to say um, new patient. So now all you have to do is check the eligibility, is right click on the appointment, and go to eligibility verification. Or you can hit your F10 key. That is your shortcut key on your keyboard. So once you select that, it is going to give you this eligibility verification result screen. And at the top right-hand corner, you're going to click verify. You're going to select your insurance company that you want to verify. So if they had primary or secondary, you can select which one you want to check and hit verify again. And just keep in mind, this is it's a real-time eligibility check, meaning it's going to check whatever is in the payer system at this moment right now when we run the check. Um, and since it is a real-time check, it actually does, um, it gets sent to the clearinghouse. Um, it funnels through, it pulls the information from your Metasoft. It funnels through the clearinghouse. The clearinghouse sends that directly to the payer system. So whatever's in the payer system at that very moment, um, since this is a fake patient and, um, and they don't have a policy, it's not going to give us a live report, but this is what will happen. So when you click verify, it's building the eligibility request pulling the information and building that eligibility, the 270 request file, and sending it to the insurance payer. And when the insurance payer gets that file, they in turn send a response back in a 271 format that comes back, funnels back through the clearinghouse. And this is the pop-up that you'll get when it comes back here in the top left. So it's saying you got a response. You'll just click OK to view the response. And this is a sample of what it looks like. I have another sample I'll show you in just a moment. But this is a sample that came back in a live request because it's not a real patient, of course. And I can't do a live with a fake, you know, a real patient because of PHI, of course, and with a real NPI number for a real provider. But that would be false. So, but this is um, how quickly it takes for the response to come back. 
and I'm going to show you, and here's a sample of what it looks like. Another place that it saves a copy of this report, and I'll show you multiple places, but let me show you a sample of it, is we go to um, the revenue management report screen, which can be found under the activities menu. So if we go activities all the way to the very bottom to revenue management report. It opens this small reports window here. I'm just going to make this a little bit larger. And here's another sample of A271 eligibility response report that has come back in. Again, this is fake data. This is not for a real life patient. As you can see here, Dwight again is one of our patients in the um, tutorial data. And this is what that response report looks like. So here in the top, I'm going to scroll down a little bit. The top left, it does say ab, um, active coverage. If it comes back as inactive, just like the other report um, did, it come back unknown, um, the rest of the report will be empty. So that's how you know right away it's not an active account. So that's just a sample of the eligibility request uh, report, excuse me, response report that comes back. Now that is saved in two different places. Um, one of the places that it's saved is in your, again, in your revenue management report folder. So a copy of those are saved here. Once you're done with it, if you no longer need it, you can just highlight it, hit archive, and move it to your archive folder to, to keep this string cluster free. So that's the one place. The other place that it saves it in, if we go back to office hours, here's the original report. If we close out of that report, it saves a copy of it underneath. If you look on the left-hand side of this um, eligibility screen here, there's a details tab. It saves a copy of the report under this details tab as well. Um, also at the top here, you see where it says failed and inactive. It's always going to say that the first time you check eligibility verification. Um, when it is active, here's a sample. Here's one right in the middle. And verification status will come back active. And then status will say complete. But since this, again, is a, a fake eligibility response, it, it didn't update that. So um, it will say active and complete in green. So you know which ones did come back correct. Um, and again, you can hit this button in the top left corner to view all transactions. So this, this is all of the times that eligibility verification was ran for that patient. And it keeps track of all of these. And each time, it's going to save a copy of the response right below here in your details tab. So I'm going to close out of there. And that does stay in there. So if I wanted to close out and at a later time come back to, um, I'm going to go into Metasoft now and show you how you can access that in Metasoft. So I'm going to close out of office hours. And if I want to access that same information in my Metasoft, I'm going to go to the patient um, chart. So here I have John Doe on the left in blue. And here's this case. So you can double click the case to open it or right click on it to open the case. And when you open the case in the far right hand side of the screen, you have an eligibility button. You just click on eligibility. And here's that same eligibility verification results screen. It's the same one you access from office hours. I'm going to jump back over to um, office hours again because there's one thing I forgot to show you. Sorry about that. So in office hours, another thing that the eligibility verification does in your program is um, in the day view, you'll have to go to the day view, which is the one single little dot there. That's your day view. And in your day view for that provider, on the schedule, on each appointment, you see the big yellow, it's supposed to be yellow, but it's hard to see it's the color, but the question mark here in the little box that my cursor is hovering over, that's where it's going to update the response um, or the icon for the eligibility response to let you know if it was unknown, if it came back active or inactive. And those different icons are here. So again, here's a little sample, see a little yellow question mark. So if it comes back with active coverage, it's going to show up with a green flag, if it comes back inactive, red X, and if the patient doesn't have enough information to get an, an active or a, an adequate response, it will come back with a question mark saying unknown. So um, if any of you are using Change Healthcare as a clearinghouse, you can always add that service to your uh, services. If you don't currently have it, you can activate that service and um, start using it right away. Hey, thanks for watching. Hope you liked the video and found it helpful. If you did, let us know by giving us a thumbs up by clicking on the like button below. 
If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, feel free to write those in the comment section below. And if you want to get more helpful videos like this one, be sure to subscribe to our channel. Thanks!